I've studied them extensively, and the spherical phenomena has different characteristics of, to it. Um, kind of a, it, it, let's just put it at, at that, leave it at that. It's, it's, it, the, the, it, they're not in color. These are, this is a totally different phenomena. This one never goes at real speed. It's as if something comes up to your nose and in one thirtieth of a second has a tour, like an iceberg or, or something, or, either, you know, or a glacier, and then leaves without us even, without aware, us even of know, aware of it. And if it chooses, for whatever reason, to look at something, it tends to slow down. And that's why I believe it, it appears when there's a hundred million dollar satellite disrupting the air, it appears when the Hubble Space Telescope is being repaired. It appears when, whenever something is happening. It, it, it's an, an amazing phenomena. And, and what I like about it is, there's, these aren't ice cream. There's nobody in science in Canada that I've ever met. And David Sarita, my partner, uh, in terms of the uh, research end, not a partner in Let's just say he's as interested as I am, and he volunteered to, to take on that role. Nobody said to him that this, what this is. Nobody suggested anything, except that it must be what it is. And, but they don't know where to go with it. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to react. It's easier if you can sort of argue that it may or may not be something. But once you just look at it, it stuns you. In December 1997, in the Brazilian capital of Brasilia, representatives from over 50 nations took part in a major international UFO congress. Among them was Alexander Ballandine, a former Soviet cosmonaut who spent six months aboard the Mir space station. In his lecture, Ballandine conceded that he and many other cosmonauts had seen UFOs. We cosmonauts had a golden rule, he said. If you see something strange, Keep watching it, because you may never see something like it again. Later, Ballandine shook the assembled audience when he claimed that future anomalous images observed and or recorded in space would be shared between the Russian Space Agency, NASA, and a special forum of UFO researchers. This was an unprecedented announcement, delivered from prepared notes that would have to have been sanctioned by the Russian government, not least because Ballandine was driven to and from the Russian embassy in Brasilia each day in a diplomatic limousine. Over breakfast and with UFO researcher Boris Choronov acting as interpreter, Ballandine assured Graham Bertzel that some UFOs reportedly seen by both American astronauts and Russian cosmonauts were very real. But when Bertzel ventured to suggest that some anomalous things seen in space might be secret Star Wars devices, Ballandine said, of course, we accept this, but some of the things seen have nothing to do with these. Since that announcement, other former Mir cosmonauts have come forward to speak about their UFO encounters. There was a huge sphere. I think it appeared when we were over Newfoundland. The sea was in the background. It was shining, sparkling, of absolutely even shape. It shone like the balls that hang on trees at Christmas greenish in color and all shimmering. It was impossible to take your eyes off it. And if further proof were ever needed that the Russian Space Agency meant what it said, then this sequence, captured by Russian state television from within mere mission control, can only be described as proof positive. Note how the camera pans around the control room before settling on the main viewing screen. Was the subject of their attention these anomalous objects, seen in close proximity to the Mir space station? Intriguingly, here's the exact same sequence, only this time recorded by Martin Stubbs from NASA's downlink. Compare the two. These objects are patently of interest to those watching in Russia, so might the same be true of their counterparts at NASA? Mm -hmm. 